And even before Operation Just Cause, you know, we were doing a lot of stuff down there. Yeah. That got, you know, we had what was called freedom of movement. We call them exercise. Basically, we were poking a stick at a Noriega, stop us from doing this. So we would, you know, okay. have these convoys and we just tool around and try to make them stop us and stuff like that. We, we were doing that. And then we were there, all of us, for the coup attempt. Okay. And I think J Mac was talking about Bosnia, you know, about, you know, him going in and how they could have saved lives. So same thing happened in, in Panama during the coup attempt. The guys I was with, and I actually had a, uh, the sniper team was, was, was with us. We sat there and watched when Noriega kind of got back in control and the sniper teams, like we got him in our sights and they wouldn't let him. Could have ended it right there. Yeah. Wouldn't let him take the shot. And we actually sat there and watched Noriega execute the leaders of the, the coup attempt. Wow. Sitting there because they were just right across this little inlet there from uh, Port Fort Fort Amador where where we were set up at. And yeah. Yeah, that was that was hard hard to take. I'll that, bet. That, that was definitely hard to take that we got done with that. And, I mean we were Man. and that it wasn't the guys there in Panama that you know it's coming up high. I'm not gonna get into politics, but that was hard. And that kind of set our sights for the especially the guys that were stationed in Panama at the time that when just cause did happen, I think we had a little bit of a grudge. Oh, for you know, sure. Going in because we're like, yeah, we uh, could have stopped that. And the other big thing about just cause, a lot of people don't know, is you know, armed forces network. Well, they didn't want to let anybody know that we were going in, so they were still doing normal PCS. We had guys that went through all the training because we were training up for this. I mean, yeah. we would do rehearsals actually where we were going to go in at all the oh, different really? units. Yeah for this you know we did so a lot like of training we, missions well, to we like Noriega and his guys yeah i mean we would train where we were going to go in at but we would go and do it to other places too so they didn't know exactly sure, sure. where we we're at but we had, you know all of our the guys there were trained up and then we're sitting there watching guys just oh no you got a pcs but we're probably like a week out and uh <laughs> yeah we had guys leaving like the night night before oh my god and uh Steve Cox, I don't know if you remember Steve. Yeah. He shows up down there. And I remember meeting him at, at the plane. <laughs> He's getting off and uh, Dave Dave Lundquist and myself meet, meet him at the plane. We had all of his uh his gear for him sitting there. And as he got off the plane, we're like, here, 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 let's go over here. We'll get you to a room here shortly, but we gotta we gotta brief you up because he just came in just a couple of days prior. Wow. And uh and I remember looking at him going, are you, are you tax certified? He's like, no. Do you know how to control air? He's like, yes. Well, you're tax certified now. You're going with this company over here. Well, and he's for like, those well, who don't know, like for uh, if anybody listening, who's not quite tracking, yeah. like you and those guys, you were stationed in Panama, like during just cause, like it was, you, we had had people down there, you know, at Howard or at Fort Amador. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So before the, you were there even on the ground before the Rangers even jumped in or the 82nd or whoever. So. Oh, yeah. We basically started. There was a uh, – how, how big were we? We were part of a uh, another – I was with an, another attack player support group, the 24th, and which for people who don't know, those attack player support squad, we were – you had the ground attack P guys that most of us know about, and then you had the air facts side of the house. So we had guys uh, – the pilots down there were the air the, – Air, Air, Air Facts flying uh, A-37s. And they always made sure they were A-37s, not OA, because they still had the okay. minigun. The, the minigun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there was, I think, 24, 25 of us Tech p that, that were stationed there at the time. We supported okay. the 193rd Infantry Brigade, which had two two battalions. The 87th was a, a non-airborne, and the, the first of the 508th was a, the airborne battalion. Then we had the two two battalion tack P's plus the brigade tack P there. But so yeah. Steve showed up. I was like, okay. <laughs> and yeah, I trust him. He's like, yeah, I, I control air. So I was like, okay, you're going to, you know, got, got him linked up, introduced him to the company he was going to be with. And like I said, it was maybe two days, three days later. We're going through, and we haven't before this. I mean, I know at least 24 hours prior, none of us has slept. Yeah, for, for 24 hours. I remember getting every, we're getting all spun up, getting everything done, and then they're like, "Okay, we got like I don't know, 
three or four or five hours before, you know, we take off. Because we actually, uh, the first of 508 was going to air assault in okay. to Fort Amador, which is right there for people who don't know. It's, it was a combined base of Americans and Panamanians when Honoria's headquarters was there. And it, just right next to the, the downtown area of, of, of Panama, the Commandancia. Yeah, yeah. headquarters area it was at and so we're our the guys we were with we were going to air assault into there and secure Fort Amador so we're all sitting around you know I remember just laying back on my rucksack going okay get some sleep and uh Tommy King who was there at working at brigade at the time comes running up to us and going oh here your call signs have changed the authentication system has changed and gave us all this stuff and he goes oh by the way we're, we're going to be heading out here shortly and he's like i gotta go and he just takes <laughs> oh off my God. Going, okay what what we got what now we got to get rid of what and doing on about that time we get the word load up because uh what happened was armed forces network announced the invasion before they were supposed to oh my god so we had to go in early <sighs> <laughs> you know, so everybody was going in early. Unfortunately, because we were there for all the units that were there, staging out of Panama, we were hitting our targets before the airborne, the guys coming in, the 7th ID and the Rangers and the 82nd. Okay. You know, we're, we're scheduled to hit their target because, you know, they're flying in. The planes can only go so fast and speed up. They're not gonna... sure, sure. I think they sped up. Sped oh, up I got you. Bit. So you had to bump up the timeline. So they they were they were on the, uh, the old timeline. Yeah. So yeah, they were going to be later than. Oh, yeah, because, okay. you know, they're flying in scheduled, you know, TOT time, drop time, yeah, yeah. whatever at, at, at this time. Oh, man, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we were actually going in before them. So we load up and I don't I have never seen a Blackhawk loaded with so many dudes. Oh really? <laughs> because we were sitting there, and we were actually the guys in the in the seat. I, I'm not kidding you. Their, their their bottoms were only hanging on by that much oh, of the seat, and so we had four guys across the seats, four or five, sitting on the edge. I was right behind one of them, and I had to hold on to him as the person behind me held on to me as we were taking off and going. And luckily, it wasn't a very long flight because you're just yeah, no flying doubt. around, going out the ocean, coming in surprise. But because we had to leave early, we were supposed to have AH-64 Apaches take out some of the uh, the uh, air defense guns. Okay. They had their the, the ZPU, uh, I forget now, twos, 23 millimeters. They had sitting on the hilltops at Fort Amador. Okay. Well, since we took off early, the Apaches never, you know, they weren't there. So we're coming around. All of a sudden, you start seeing the tracer rounds, and I remember there was a young private because we had the army was the same same problem. They had guys coming straight out of jump school, right, and right. landing, getting on the bird. And I just remember this young private that was sitting next to me as we're flying in. He's like, "Oh my God, look at all those tracers!" And I go, "Yeah, there's three to four rounds in between those." <laughs> and he was like, "What?" So we're sitting there and we can see them, you know, initially they just heard us and they're just, you know, as, as you see in a lot of stuff, they're just shooting the sky, hope, yeah, hoping, yeah. hoping for the, the golden BB to come in. And for guys that, that were radios, I had my radio on, the pilot and co-pilot, my, my frequency, our strike freak we had was close to theirs. So their stuff was bleeding over into my headset. Oh, so I'm hearing them, you know, just like, holy, get down, get down, get lower, get lower, get lower. <laughs> and about that time, it was like, you felt it. It wasn't, it wasn't enough to bring the chopper down, but you felt it go, the, the tell of the chopper just. Oh, kinda, like you're taking rounds. Yeah, we took one. I think one, one, one round in, in, in the tell, and so I'm hearing the pilots, you know, pilot and co-pilot freaking out. They get oh, down yeah. so low that we had this water coming straight into the helicopter because you know. The prop wash was just blowing the seawater. So, you know, half of us, if you're in the front God. two rows, we were half wet, soaking wet by the time, the time we, got, we got to the LZ. So we're down there, we're doing this. And of course, by that time, all the helicopters are, you know, worried about tracing. We finally got below because the AAA were on the hilltop, so they can only traverse so so far down. So we got down below that, and that's why we were flying as, as, as low as we were. Oh, nice. Popped in. 
we sit down. Luckily, training, you know, doing that there a couple of times, you know, when we got out, you know, run out, you hit the ground. Of course, this young private I was with, <laughs> he lands next to me. But for some reason, we all go out like this, you know, fanning out like you do normally. Yeah. For whatever reason, he ended up like this to me. His barrel <laughs> of his M16 was here and he had it. He didn't have it on safe. And it's like, pow. <laughs> What? <laughs> right by my face. Oh, I'm my like, God. Whoa. And I'm like, dude, man, private, get that over here. And I go, here, put that on safe. You know, and then his sergeant's like, who shot that? Oh, my God. Get over here with, yeah, to keep you guys safe. So we hit and we started taking machine gun rounds as soon as we landed from a position. So I'm sitting there. It was me, the company commander, and his RTO, the fire support officer. His chopper ended up landing somewhere, not where it was supposed to. He wasn't there. So I was it. I was, I was the whole fire support for, for, for the company. I was talking to the FOs and all this. And I was probably, I still laugh about this one because we're taking fire and he's like, let's go. So we got up, there was a stump. I don't know. Maybe it was probably about that big around where a tree was cut down. And he runs behind that. His RTO's laying there behind him. I'm scrunched up next to him. We're all trying to lay <laughs> for cover behind the stump as machine gun fires grazing over our heads. And he finally looked at me and he goes, this is probably not a very good place to be, is it? I was like, no, sir, it probably isn't. He's like, okay. And once machine gun fire stopped for a little bit, I don't know if they were changing ammo or, or what they were doing, but you know, it was like, I was like, let's go. And so we stood up and there was a small building close by that we ran up and got, got behind the wall of that one. Yeah. And I just remember when we ran up to it, there were some doors and those guys just ran up to us. So I cautiously went up to the door and, and this is where I almost had a, a, probably a friendly fire because I was sitting there and all of a sudden I hear bash against the, the window of the, the glass door. And I'm yeah. like, whoa. And I just happened to see a U.S. There was like five Navy guys that didn't make it out in time. Oh, really? So they were locked in there. <laughs> yeah, they they locked themselves in in, in the small uh, building. I'm not even sure what what what, what it was. <laughs> I was like, "What?" They're like, "Yell, hey, get us out!" And I was like, "No, stay there. Just you know, wait it out. Just stay on the ground." <laughs> so we're sitting there. I got up, talked to AC. We got some eyes on the area. The AC we had supporting us. He was scouting around. Took out the uh, machine gun nest that they had set nice. up. Like I think it was three guys in that one. End up taking that out, but then, then basically we're behind the wall here. Machine gun nest was over here. I was kind of controlling and we were going to head on out, but we didn't notice that there was some other guy sitting here. And I still remember to this day, because we're doing one at a time. It was my turn to go. And I just got done talking to the AC and I put my authenticator. This is back in the day. We still had paper authenticators okay. and I remember putting it in my side pocket. And for whatever reason, I took out to go uh, around or from the wall and I decided, oh, I better make sure I got this stuff secured. So I pulled back and as I was pulling back around, just went right in front of my face. I mean, I felt, Whoa. I felt the heat from the round Jeez. across my nose. But I just remember, I was like, man, if I didn't just pull back for that second to check, you know, tap, tap my pocket to make sure I, 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 had, I had it secured in there. Who, who knows what was happening? So we get oh, through that. Uh, uh, some of the other guys on the ground took took took, took care of those guys because we had to clear these big, huge buildings. I don't know if you remember going to Amador, the you know these multi-story buildings they had there yeah, at the yeah. time. Well, one of the jobs for us was to clear these buildings, which got us to to the ocean side of, of Fort Fort Amador. And uh, I was like, well, you know, I mean, if I can get up in these top windows, I can see better you know, to, to control from. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So I go inside the building, we start clearing and they have false ceilings, false walls. You know, the hallways are like the door, you got hallways that face a row of windows that face outside. Then you got a hallway, then you got the buildings and the office with their doors. And then you got the false ceiling above them all. You know, the guys would be going through clearing and I'll be following along with them. And guys would start popping, you know, they get into, the ceilings, the PDF, 
payment. Oh, really? force. Drop down, start shooting at you again, and if they have to go back and clear. You know, since they're, you know, we were going there, we were trying not to kill as many as we could, you know. Sure. So we went in there initially with concussion type grenades, throw them in the room, mm-hmm. bang, knock them out. <laughs> well, the sergeant, uh, I was with the team following behind was clearing. And some of these officers had wielding uh, windows in the hallway. Well, he got up, they busted the window, but he decided to stand behind the door against the door. They threw the concussion grenade in. It landed next to the door on the opposite side, blew the door off the hinges, knocked him out. Oh, no. <laughs> so I ended up having to take over the team because I was the only NCO at the time. So I ended up ended up clearing, finished clearing that floor out. And it got to the point that we realized that we couldn't get these buildings cleared with the guys we had. Because like I yeah. said, guys, they just get in the ceiling and go, you know, go in there. And we had one guy go into one of the bathrooms. And the guys, you know, open the door, they would shoot. The 60 would come in, they would, uh, the guy would shoot back at us, threw in a concussion grenade, the guy was still shooting back at us, threw in a frag grenade, and we didn't hear anything, but he was still alive. The guy was actually standing in the toilet, in a stall, you know, with the metal yeah. doors around, bullet holes, everything, was, ne- was never hit. Really? Yeah, so I always tell Amazing. people, it's like, you think maybe you're, you know, places, but you just never know where, you know, munitions are going to fly, sure. you know, what damage you're actually going to do, you know, yeah, whether yeah. it's bomb and stuff like that. You may think you took it out, but it's a good chance that it didn't get taken out because everything is based on where stuff hits, ricochets, blows up, you know, right. ground, the whole thing. But yeah, so. Wow. Keep going. I mean, got to cut this short. So they decided, okay, so they pulled us out. The battalion commander, Colonel Fitzgerald, got, I don't know where he got this 105 from, but he brought in a towed 105, set it up to the building. They had a megaphone. So they're like, give up, give up, nothing. Direct fire, direct lay, bam. Blow, blow a hole. Jeez. Oh, you know, and as they're doing it, it'd be like, uh, and it's like, boom, blow, blow a hole in it. So we got them to clear out the first building. We had the second building. So we moved back in. And. Guys in Korea would know what I'm talking about, the Benjo ditches and drainage ditches. Yeah. Well, they had kind of those there in Amador that would flow out, out out to the sea. So it was, I don't know, about chest high. So we're in that following along. There's a, uh, I think they called it, it was a V300. It's a light skin, uh, uh, four wheel, dual axle uh, armored vehicle with like a okay. 90 millimeter cordless gun in it. Okay. It was sitting there, it was active. And uh, Dave Lundquist, he was with the battalion. And just the way I was sitting and it, they didn't bring the 90 guns, but they were shooting machine gun towards it. I couldn't get a, a good look at the target. So I was like, you know, Dave, can you see what I'm talking about? And where he was set up, he's like, yeah. So we got the AC on it and, and Dave's calling in, call, calling in the AC on it. And I'm listening in and, the company commander, he's like, oh, I want to see this. So he's standing up. And this is only, this vehicle is only like 40 meters away. Jeez. And uh, I was like, yeah, you better get down. Because they're going, <laughs> I think they shot 40s, for the 40 mesh metal at it. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we got the warning because the ACs were so busy. And we only had so many that yeah. they would land at Howard, fuel, re- rearm, and take off. So after the first time they didn't know what their tweak was oh okay so they would come back and say we're not really sure if we're foresighted <laughs> you know, being taken off and landing and all that that could well, be hairy if you're only that truck yeah only 40 meters away. Dave, you know i was like dave if you can do this because i'm i plan on ha- ha- having my head down <laughs> inside the ditch but the company commander <laughs> right. he's like standing like this and i'm like i reached up and grabbed him and was like yeah you better get down and he's like oh i want to take a look <laughs> about that time you know, I got, you know, round, rounds on the way and you know, all of a sudden it was like, boom, 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 you know, lights up like a, you know, a Christmas tree out there sparkling, you know, sparks from the mesh metal. And, and then the vehicle blows up and he was like, yeah, appreciate it, Sergeant, <laughs> <laughs> on that side. But yeah. Took that out, 
in in up clearing clearing the next building after the first day you know for the most part you know most of the major fighting was done at that yeah. time but and i remember uh david linked up with me because we were getting ready to switch out i was going to go back back to battalion talks i had some stuff i had to take care of with with, with the alo and i remember i think we're, i don't know if we're battalion commander or the company commander but he's like hey what are you guys doing right now we're like well nothing really right now he's like can you go check and clear out these huge drainage culverts that ran from inland out to the sea? <laughs> so there's me and Dave. We're like walking in these culverts and got our little angle flashlights at the time. You know, yeah. sitting there going in there to see if any PDF had run in and and and, and try to hide, hide hide inside these culverts. And I wasn't. We weren't really too worried about that. We were more worried about some snake or something coming out and probably. Right. We ended up biting and stuff. So we ended up doing that, cleared out of that. We ended up going uh, from there. We went to uh, the Commandancia. That's where I got my okay. little picture of all. We all finally linked up because uh, oh, nice. Steve Cox, you know, he showed up and he spent half his time. He was actually rescuing family members. During oh, that time. okay. And, uh, you know, he's running under fire, carrying kids underneath his arms and trying to get them to cover. And Johnny uh, Rodriguez, uh, he came in. He was in with himself on the uh because he brought the the mark system in mm -hmm. so he you know we all kind of flew in separate you know kind of like nature of the job coming in separate so sure. once we got to the commandant we actually all all finally linked up and uh ended up helping clear that area out and, and get it out and my alo at the time whatever reason he decided he was going to go souvenir hunting so we're in the commandantia and for people that don't know the commandantia was the headquarters for the Payment Defense Force in Noriega, but it's in the old French Quarter, so it's it's European built. So your alleyways and roadways are really narrow with high yeah. high rise buildings. So, and because we had to leave so early, normally I never went anywhere with my stripes on, uh, sewn on my uniform. Yeah, yeah. But for that one, we did. And you know, it's like one time we're sitting there talking. I'm talking to the FOs and told the secure area, and all of a sudden it's like ping. Ping. and we're starting to get sniped at now the panama snipers weren't really snipers they were just guys in right. the high right just people shooting yes yeah. yeah so they weren't really <laughs> that good at it <laughs> when it came up but i did notice and everybody even the, the fo's are like hey ingram what it looks like he, they're shooting at you <laughs> because all the rounds were skipping off next to me and i'm like man i can really see my stripes and about that time, probably ended up, did yeah it, it ended up cut, cutting the things off after that time but <laughs> the alo he decided to go that's crazy go souvenir hunting and because uh, that's what we had by that time was you know a few people running around because yeah. panama had uh the dignity battalion which was the we called it the dingbat battalion but basically right. it was noriega letting all the criminals out of prison and made them into a quote military unit. Oh, uh, okay. At at that time, so you had a lot of them running around just being criminals, really more more than anything else. But yeah. But the tank commander asked for our alo, and I'm like, I don't know where he's at. And he's like, Well, sorry, you need to go find him. So here I am walking around by myself downtown French Quarter, searching searching for him. I finally see him digging around in some rubble, and I just grabbed him. He's like, Sir, come on, let's go back. <laughs> Not quite secure yet, but yeah, but yeah. We uh, ended up staying there, got cleared out there. Uh, about that time, get a call on the radio that uh, actually I think it was Mike Mike Denny was on the radio and said I needed to come back to the brigade area. So they brought a chopper in. I flew out, got back. The uh, the Seventh Special Forces Group guys that were up at Rio Hato couldn't talk to the AC one thirty. So I ended up going up there and working with them oh, cool. uh, for about three days, maybe a week, working with them to, for them to complete their, their mission. Yeah. And the only reason I, I bring that up, because that segue into one of the other assignments. So I ended up working with them. You know, like, hey, appreciate it. Can, can you stay with us? And we're like, no, nah, I got to get back. <laughs> Came back. A lot of people don't know, you know, everybody left, but. The war actually went on, well, the conflict operation went on for like another two months because after that, we were actually out in the jungle looking for everybody that ran away. Oh, okay. So we spent that time just 
uh, <laughs> actually the one area where we set up our our operations area was a retired i think seventh group command sergeant major that retired in panama he actually set up his place i mean he had constantina wire everything he dug foxholes so he was like hey if you want to use my place to stage out of you can i, I got connections so we're using him kind of was like yeah nice. these guys so we go hunt you know these guys down we pick up you know come in i never had much much problem once we found them but yeah. while we were there i get another call on the radio saying you got to come back to howard air force base now and i'm like you know dave and <laughs> i think johnny i don't think steve was on that one steve was out doing some other stuff they're looking at me like hey what's going on I'm like i don't know i'm thinking like my parents died or something yeah, so yeah. i get back to howard mike denny <laughs> links up with me and goes hey you like football I was like, yeah. He goes, okay, get cleaned up. You're going to the Super Bowl. What? <laughs> I was like, what? He goes like, yeah, you, you got picked to be the Air, the Air Force rep for the uh, Just Cause for for the Super Bowl. So I actually got a wow. free, free week-long, 10-day vacation up to New Orleans at the time. Nice. was Because uh, they picked one guy from uh, each service, Army. So we had a uh, guy from the 82nd, uh, a Navy SEAL. Uh, a Marine Corps, Lance Corporal, myself, and then we had a guy from the Coast Guard. Oh, okay. All show up there, and the owner of the New Orleans Saints actually paid for us to come up. Oh, and, nice. Yeah, it was nice. It was it was, it was kind of cool. You know, I just yeah. Kinda cool. They brought us all down. There. It, it wasn't aired on TV, but during Super Bowl, but at the pregame ceremony, they brought us all out in the field, and they read you know read our bio, what we did, you know during no the op operation Just Cause, and. Which was cool, but the coolest part was after the game, down on Bourbon Street, everybody started recognizing us, so we didn't have to buy a drink all all nice. the rest of the time we were nice. there. But yeah, so that that, that was kind of cool. I got the uh, I got a chance to go to the Super Bowl, one and only time go, going to the Super Bowl, and got to stand yeah, that's awesome. the, the owner's box and met the NFL commissioner and wow, all these people. We actually got to go to the uh, the NFL owner, team owners, pre Super Bowl party. So oh, it was really? my first time being around millionaires slash billionaires. So that was like, <laughs> yeah, that, that was definitely an interesting time. Hey!